National Federation of the Blind, live the life you want. Hey, I'm Georgie. This is Loki. He's my guide dog. He's not being a guide dog right now. He's just being a dog. And I want to talk to you guys about some things you can do right now to help take care of your dog. And I think it's actually really, really great right now because in particular when everybody's sort of cooped up because your dog's going to help you get outside, get exercising, and just sort of get out and about because you know that's, you're always allowed to take your dog out. So first thing as a blind person working with a dog or, you know, not working, playing anything is it's really, really important to use your dog's leash as a non-visual tool. So the leash is a great way to feel what your dog's doing, where he's going. You want to keep a pretty short leash on a dog at first if you're not as used to walking them or being outside with them, just so they don't have as much free range to move around and so you can feel them a lot better. If your dog has a harness, because a lot of pet dogs do, it's not just a guide dog thing, um, that's also really, really helpful because you can feel their body movements a lot better with a harness. So you can tell when their head is moving and all those kinds of things that other people can see, you'll be able to feel it tactily through the leash and the harness. But a leash is good enough. Um, so two big things, two big things you should do with your dog outside. One is walking them, obviously. So you can walk them with the leash in your one hand and your cane in the other. And it's actually great to, it teaches your dog not to be so afraid of canes and to get used to them. And it's just, it's great. It doesn't, it shouldn't interfere with your cane at all. Um, you know, just keep them on one side or the other. The, the only downside is you won't have a free hand. So, you know, you might have to stop if you need to scratch your nose. But you shouldn't be scratching your nose anyway. So, um, so walking them, use your cane, use your leash. And like I said, keep it very short so the dog can't pull ahead and kind of knock you over. The other big thing outside, aside from walking, dogs do really, really need to play. It's not just enough to exercise them. They need the stress relief of playing, um, especially, I mean, when you're older, if you ever get a guide dog, they play a lot. They, they need a lot of play because their job is very stressful. So you want to, you know, that's a great thing to do outside with your dog. If you have a yard with a fence, you can go out in front of their ball. Um, and it's really, it's... It's really helpful when you're when you have your dog outside to have a kind of a collar that makes a lot of noise, like maybe put a bell on it or just anything so that you can hear where your dog is. You don't want them getting far enough away from you that you can't hear them and keep track of them. Um, so as far as in, uh, well, actually, another big outdoor thing for dogs is pooping. Dogs poop outside, obviously, and that's another area where the leash is going to come in super handy. So. You want to, if your dog's not already trained to do this, the best non-visual way to pick up poop after a dog is to have them using, is to have them on a leash when they're going. Because the thing with dogs is, <laughs> before the, before a dog poops or pees, every dog has their own kind of little poop dance that they do. And when you have the leash on them, you can actually like feel where they're going as they're doing that. And you'll know like, oh, she's about to poop because she's doing her little spin move that she always does. And like I said, every dog is, you know, a unique individual, just like how we are unique individuals. And so their dances are all going to be a little different, but you can get to learn it and the leash will tell you, you know, when, when they're going. Um, it's a little, it can be a little, it's definitely gross at first picking up dog poop. I got to tell you, like the biggest piece of advice on that is just like, you know, you just got to do it. Like you got to get used to it. It's like, you got to get past kind of the grossness of it. Cause again, if you ever grow up and have a dog for yourself, whether that's a guide dog or just a pet dog, you're going to have to do it. I mean, it's the same as changing a diaper. It's the same as a lot of things. You're just going to have to get used to it over time. And do you have your hand just like in a bag? Oh yeah. Okay. Here, I'll show you. So yeah, that's a good point. You got bags. So you put your hands, you got a little bag. You can use a grocery bag too. You don't have to have a specific food bag. You put your hand inside the bag. And then when the dog poops, you feel around. And that's part of knowing like the dance. Like you want to know, it kind of helps you identify where, like the general area of where the poop's going to be. Um, with guide dogs, you can touch their backs while they're pooping. And that like tells you specifically where the poop is. You can do that with your pet dog, but you kind of have to like get them trained up to it. Like it's not something they're going to be used to at first. They're not going to want you touching them when they poop. So you can do it. It just takes a lot of time and patience. Like, if I were you and you were training them to do it, you would touch their back once and give them a treat really quick and just sort of slowly build it up over time with treats and soft words and encouragement. So yeah, you put your hand in the bag, you feel around, find the poop, 
pick it up, and then you flip the bag inside out. You never touch the poop with your bare hands. Flip it inside out, and then you do, you tie it, you tie the top off. So you do like, um, hmm, how do I think, how do I describe this? You sort of curl it like a smiley face shape, and then the right end of it, you curl around and pull, make a little, um, a little like circle. And then you pull it through, you take the end of it and you pull it through so that it ties off. It looks like this, for those of you who can see. And there you go, let me untie it. And that's how it works. You, like I said, you never, never, never have to touch the poop. Um, speaking of poop, I know this isn't dogs, but if you have a cat and you're cleaning a litter box out, your best tool with that is the little rake. You want to use that like a cane, the same way you would use a cane or in the kitchen, you might use a spatula or a fork. Use your little rake to like feel around, you know, not with your hands so you don't have to touch anything and feel around to find it with the rake um, in the litter box. So that's just a quick cat side note in regard to poop. <laughs> okay. So two more things, well actually three more quick things about dogs. So when you're feeding them, it is best as a blind person, it's it's definitely best to use a measuring cup. It's just the most consistent way to know that you're getting the exact same amount of food every time. So, you know, every dog is different. I don't know how much food your dog eats, but you know, figure that out and then use your measuring cup to scoop it out of the bag. Um, you can either, I mean, some measuring cups, you might have one that has braille or tactile markers on it, but you can always tell them apart by their size. And you know, just pour it into the bowl. It's very, very spill proof when you use the cup. Um, as far as, so dogs, another like great thing and to keep in mind with dogs is there's other care that they need, like eating and pooping and playing outside is the basics, but you know, dogs need, like, I think I clean Loki's ears out once a month. Some people brush their dog's teeth once a month or even more often. And they all need things like heartworm and flea medicine once a month. So definitely like check with your parents and see what kind of things your family pets specifically needs that you could help out with. Because I mean, giving them a heart pill is you just pop it in their mouth and they gobble it up. Like it's easy, easy, easy peasy. Um, but those are sort of things people don't always keep in mind is the, the things that you're not necessarily doing every day, but they are just as important for your animal's health and safety. And then the last thing um, is brushing. So especially with dogs, like service dogs that are going to be out in the public, you want to brush them really often because it keeps their shedding down and it's just polite. So I've got a brush here for Loki. Um, big thing with brushing, well, two big things. You want to be very, very gentle, okay? With animals in general, you always want to be gentle. It's not just about not hurting them. It really does help you form a bond with the animal. Like they're going to trust you more and they're going to be able to tell that you care about them. You just always want to be very gentle with them. Um, and with brushing in particular, there are areas of a dog that you just don't brush. You don't brush their head. You don't brush their paws. You brush their tail very carefully, if at all. Um, mostly you want to focus on their back, their rope, like their back legs. Hello. And you can do their chest. I don't really do that as much on my dog. He doesn't shed as much on his chest. Um, but you want to pick the areas that you know, kind of work for your dog and kind of read their reaction to your brushing them and see how the dog feels about it. Okay, can you get for me, Lovey? Let's go. Let's go. I want to show them how to brush. Come here. Okay. Stay still. Nice. Yeah, shake, shake, shake. All right. So to brush them, you just go very gently down their back with the brush. You want to hold them still. You don't want them moving around. And you just do gentle, um, like just straight down their back like motions down the back and then for the little rump you go down vertically down their back the back of their back leg and you want to pick up as much hair as possible and that's about it you just want to stay very slow gentle and you're brushing with one hand and you have your other hand on the leash yep well i don't always have it on his leash but yeah i have the other hand kind of keeping him still because gotcha. he thinks we're playing right now clearly <laughs> stay, stay still and you want to get both sides and then when you're done brushing, I don't have this with me, but if you do have, if you have a comb, that's the easiest way to clean the brush out is get a comb and you just go up the brush and knock all the hair out. You want to do this outside. This is a bad example because we're inside, but you want to do this outside normally so you're not getting hair all over your house, all over the floor, because the point of this is for them to be shedding less, not more. So yeah, but dogs, a lot of dogs really enjoy brushing. My dog is kind of so-so on it. He doesn't love it. He doesn't hate it. 
a lot of them, it's like a very, very positive stress relieving thing for them and they really, really like it. So I think that's about everything. But these things, you know, that you do with dogs, they're really gonna, especially if you are ever, if you're considering getting a guide dog when you're older, it'll help you out, uh, <clears throat> it'll help you out a lot to have this experience, like taking care of an animal. But even if you aren't, I mean, it's a great, great thing to do, especially right, like I said, right now, when, you know, it's a great way for both of you, like you and the animal to relieve stress and just hang out and do stuff together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about all I got on dogs, but maybe I'll do another one of these on cats at some point. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Connect with us. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at NFB underscore voice. And like us on Facebook by searching for National Federation of the Blind. Visit our website at nfb.org or call us at 410-659-9314.